Hello, hello, heathens. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have, of course, another color in chat. Now we are taking this way back to my book, Stardust Space Lust. This book was released years ago. It was one of my earlier books, and it is also, it's a bit of a sleeper. It's not my top seller. It never has been, but uh, those who do buy it, they they buy it for a specific reason and they tend to dig it a lot because this book is really niche. You have to be a nerd, you have to be a bit of a science fiction nerd, and you have to be a retro loving nerd. So you have to be a combination of all of those things to really resonate with this book. So I get it, she's not for everyone, but I have a soft spot for this book because I am all of those things. I love campy, vintage sci-fi. I love all of that. So yeah, am I a nerd? Yeah, I'm definitely a bit of a nerd. So there you go. I like this book. And the cover is really fun. This was, we did a wonky situation with the color blocking on this one. I put the title down at the bottom, which is unheard of, right? But I love the cover. And oh my God, she put blue on the cover. Look, some of my coloring books do have blue on the cover. If you are new to my channel, Blue is my least favorite color, so I rarely use it. But in this instance, it made sense because the colors for the cover of this book were directly inspired from vintage tin toy packaging, the cardboard boxes, specifically the space toys, the rocket ships, the UFOs that used to come in the, and the ray guns as well, in the little cardboard packaging. These were the colors that were very prominent back then. This bright, bold green, yellows, oranges, and blues. So that's where the cover came from. Just a little history lesson because it's been a while since we have seen Stardust Space Lust. Uh, the color palette, I've already picked the color palette. We are going to be playing with uh, pinky, purpley, orangey, and black. This coloring book actually has one of, I think, one of my favorite coloring pages that I've ever created, which is, it's rare for me to say, I rarely have a favorite, but this page here, I colored this page years ago, I can't remember when, but it has been years, and uh, I mean, we've done quite a bit of work in this one. Look how cool this one is. This one would have been a favorite, except for the fact that I hate the background. The background killed it for me, but I love the figure. This book works really, really well with the Sparkle Pop pens because the colors in the Sparkle Pop pens are, they're glittery and they're beautiful, but they are darker, richer tones. So this one, I went ham with the Sparkle Pop pens. You can see, again, playing with the idea of those vintage tin toys. So, and look, 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 look. You can see me begin to play with that bizarre color blocking that I do frequently in Rococo Gogo. Case in point, I have her right here. And these books were created many years apart, but see that? My color blocking technique with the makeup. Let's see, again here, see? So yeah, I've, I've basically been the same monster forever. Quit Stalin and pick a page. Oh, you know which one I want to do? Look how fun this one is. All pink. The one that I want to do, I think she's towards the back. Yeah. This one. We're going to do this one. I actually created an original illustration based off of this page. Well, actually, no, 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 it was the opposite. I created the illustration that I made the coloring page afterward. There's an art print available in my Etsy shop if you're interested. I'll pop the picture up here so you can take a look at it. And she is currently available in my Etsy shop. All right, and the art print, the illustration that I had made, the colors, it was inspired by the desert, so warm colors, and so I thought, oh, she lives on a hot desert planet, so I created it in warm tones, and today we're kind of going the opposite here. We're going with um, pinky, purpley, orangeys, I think. Let's see. Definitely, well, maybe it won't be that much of a difference. Let's see, so there's an orange and a peach. I'd already pulled these colors. I pulled the colors first quite by accident actually when I was working on a color and chat recently and uh, 
the colors just popped out at me and I said, oh, I gotta use those for something. Yeah, okay, this is her color palette right here. Cute. And today we are being fueled by, well, my water's almost out, but ice water and the man, the myth, the legend, my Earl Grey tea. I love an Earl Grey. I love, love, love an Earl Grey. During the spring and summer months when you see me constantly drinking iced tea, it's usually a black tea or an Earl Grey. Well, it, uh, Earl Grey is a black tea, but it's going to be a plain black tea or it's going to be some kind of Earl Grey. It's just the Earl. He has my heart. Uh, what color? I want to give her this green skin. She's going to get green skin. She's going to get peach hair, and we're going to do a pink background. How about that? That sounds good to me. The art supplies that I am using will be listed down below. I am going to be using, the bulk of my supplies will be today, the Ohuhu pastel markers. I mentioned in a recent video, it may very well have been my previous color and chat, that someone told me, they left me a comment in my comments on one of my videos and they said, hey, did you know, wait, was it or was it on Instagram? Oh my God, I don't remember. But uh, one of you lovely weirdos, I, I don't know if you're watching the video right now, but someone left me a comment about the pastel Ohuhu markers that they were releasing a new set, which I'm excited for. I have not purchased it yet. I will be. However, I am waiting until I whittle down my supply of markers because I have a ton of alcohol markers. And when I kill, let's say 15, no, let's say 10, uh, 10 to 15 markers, then I will treat myself and I will purchase the new set of pastels. I'm sure without a doubt that Copic likely has, well, no, I'm, no, they do. They have equivalents for all of these pastel markers, but the Ohuhus end up being cheaper if you purchase the whole set as opposed to individuals. However, what I'm finding is that there are certain colors that I'm gravitating towards a lot in this set of pastels. And so I would like to purchase the Copic equivalent. The bitch of it is, is that I do not live somewhere where I have an art supply store near. Now we do have an art supply store. Wait a minute, is it still around? I live in Palm Springs, if you don't know. Uh, we did have an art supply store here years ago. I don't know if it's still around, but it was very small and they really only stocked what the the local colleges were requesting in their syllabus and art supply lists and all of that. So I don't know if that place is even still around, but it, basically it was a situation where if I wanted something and they did not have it, our option was, oh, we can order it for you. I'm like, well, thanks, I can order it myself, you know? So I just didn't shop there. And my whole thing is, is that I want an art supply store, such as a Blick, for instance, that was the big art supply store in San Diego, where I used to live. And I could just walk in and I could test markers and I could easily compare them. And so I would like to take a bunch of my Ohuhu markers, swatch them, take them in and then buy the Copic equivalent. But I can't do that. I can't do it. Ah, drives me crazy. So it's a risk and a guessing game ordering them online, which is why I'm afraid to do it because Copics are not cheap. Are they worth every penny? Yeah, you bet your ass they're worth every penny. But man, oh, <laughs> What? Oh, I hadn't noticed that. That's goofy. I mean, it's cute, but it's goofy. 
My today the <laughs> I'm not drinking a fancy Earl Grey today. Today it's just big Bigelow. It's the Target, the bottom shelf Target Earl Grey. I just noticed that its little tag says <clears throat> We tagged you, now tag us. <laughs> I wrote something goofy like that on my my care cards for my brand Coco Naughty. I wrote, oh my God, that's funny. I'm just as corny as the tea company. Look, I have the cards here. Again, if you are unaware, I have a, oh my God, I'm so sorry about the jiggles. I have an online boutique where I sell art and clothing. It's called Coco Naughty, and uh, I sell a lot of kitschy acrylic earrings, and so when I sell them, I include a care card, and I put tag, you're it, and then there's the, the hashtag, so, I mean, it's basically the same thing, right? Basically the same phrase as Bigelow. I have to admit, I've never tried Bigelow. This was the first time last week when I went to the grocery store. How many of you are gasping out there? Like, Bigelow is a staple in my house. What's wrong with you? I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm usually, I'm, um, I wouldn't say I'm a tea snob, but I'm more of a tea snob than I am with coffee. I don't really care with coffee. I will drink bottom shelf coffee all day long. I mean, all day long. But tea, mm, I definitely appreciate good quality tea. Bigelow, it's just fine. Bigelow is like the Lipton of tea, right? Hey, I drink a Lipton black tea. See, for utilitarian purposes, if it's just gonna be my my daily 10 gallons <laughs> of iced tea, I really don't care if it's cheap Lipton, I don't. But Earl Grey, yeah, it makes a difference. I like the Tazo. Tazo Earl Grey is very good. And of course the Artisan, um, Artisan, ooh, just the Artisan, okay? The Artisan <laughs> Loose Leaf Earl Greys are always very good. Uh, I like Harney and Sons. Harney and Sons Earl Grey is very good too. I drink that one frequently actually. There are several Earl Greys that they make that I love. Ooh, we're just getting all into the tea today. I love tea, and I'm excited now that the weather has started to cool down in the desert, that now I can drink hot tea throughout the day. Usually it's iced tea, iced coffee all day long, but yep, I'm excited for it. It bums me out that we hardly get any rain because uh, Palm Springs. You know, I live in the desert, and I love it, love it, love it. But what I have found now that I've lived here for many years is that the Palm Springs Desert, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. But I, I'm not dismissing that at all. But we don't get the magical desert weather that they do up in the high desert, such as Joshua Tree. I'm very close to Joshua Tree, too. Joshua Tree, from me, from my apartment right here, is about an hour away. That's it. I live very close, but even then, that's enough of a distance and of an elevation change for the weather to be extremely different. Joshua Tree gets snow, they get more rain, and yet just an hour down the mountain, basically, is where I live, we get these paltry little four-hour rainstorms, and it's drizzly for one day, and then they dissipate and go away. Next door in Arizona, they get this beautifully powerful, magical monsoon season. Nope, not here, not in Palm Springs, so that bums me out. Someday, someday I would like to live in a desert that speaks a little bit more to my, <laughs> my feral little soul, huh? I don't want to leave Palm Springs, I don't, but I just, after having experienced that beautiful desert weather, like I know I've become a desert creature through and through. I don't mind the heat at all. It can get oppressive in Palm Springs, and that's another thing too, that in Palm Springs, our weather down here is much hotter. When it's 122 degrees down here, up in Joshua Tree, it's only about 109, right? Which I know, I know, to some people's like, what? That's still hot. No, it is, but 
it's oppressive. 122 degrees, 120, that's, that's oppressively hot, right? It's not good for you. It's not good for your pets. So it's just not, you know, it makes it a hassle. I don't mind the extra hassle, but even just taking my dog outside, I know he gets uncomfortable, right? I mean, no, I don't make him walk on the hot floor, obviously. I pick him up and then I carry him across the street, but I know just the very act of being outside to do your business has to be really annoying for the animals, you know? And I feel bad. So, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. One day I would like to live somewhere. I just, I, I don't want to leave Palm Springs. I don't. I love it here. I love the history of the place. But, I, the history of Palm Springs is all man-made, right? And I, I love it. I love the way that it looks. I love taking my walks down these beautiful mid-century streets. But there's just something deep inside of me that's wanting the wild desert, right? And I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's me being silly or me being unreasonable or what. Because I, I live, I exist on two different planets, right? Like, oh, how apropos this conversation for this book is where on one hand, I enjoy the manicured lawns and I love living in a wealthy neighborhood. I'm not wealthy, by the way. Uh, I think everybody who follows me, you guys already know that. I certainly am not in the tax bracket that you would think would live in Palm Springs, right? Uh, the reason that I'm able to live here is because, I, first of all, I don't own a million dollar home. I live in a one bedroom apartment, number one. Number two, I'm single and no children. And number three, I don't work in Palm Springs. I don't work in California. I work for myself, right? So. That's why I'm able to live here. and But it's getting increasingly more difficult. We all know this, right? And it's like, in order to survive... I'm sorry this conversation is getting very adult. But I'm just letting you know where my brain is. You know, I've been exploring a lot of business ideas. And I've been exploring a lot of... Um, a lot of ways to support myself. And all of these are very expensive. And they re require a lot of... Uh, time and effort and financial investment, quite frankly. <clears throat> and California is making it hard. It's making it hard. So as much as I love living here, being surrounded by the wealthy houses, I feel as though being somewhere where there's more open desert, I can breathe better. I'm more able to think about myself, what I want to do. And I just realized that I used two different colors in the background, and that's okay. It looks cool. But I think truly, uh, honestly, what's happening is that I'm realizing that what I love about Palm Springs is everything the humans have built out here, the houses, the history, all of that. But I dislike being around the people. It's, it's a difficult position to be in because <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a total prick, but I don't think I will ever be truly happy unless I can live somewhere where I can be completely alone 99% of the time. I, it, even taking my dog for a walk, I love taking my dog out for a walk, but if I see somebody walking down the street, you know, they're a block away, I will turn around and I will change my route just so that I don't have to speak to them. Even if it's just small talk. Even if it's just small talk, it's just, it drains me. I'm not in the mood for it. You know, if I'm in a mood leaving the apartment and I think, oh, I want to go for a walk and I just want to clear my head and I want to have a nice relaxing walk alone. I spent my entire day alone in my apartment, not speaking to anyone, not doing anything. And by the way, when I say speak to people, I mean physically speak to people. Like interacting with people online for me is so much more tolerable than speaking to people in person. So I'm not saying that I hate interacting with all of you. No, it's totally different. And you know what I'm saying. Interacting with people online is an entirely different feeling than it is having to physically be present, right? That's totally different. I'm talking specifically 
physical interaction to do all those people screaming outside. Someone's having a good time. So anyway, physical interaction with people. It's just, I'm in my apartment all day working. I'm listening to music, chilling, working, doing everything. And then I'm in the mood to just go on a quiet. I want to extend that peacefulness. I want to extend it by going out. <laughs> the screaming people are now getting my dog all riled up. And I just want to go out and have a nice relaxing walk with my dog. But then I start seeing people. I'm like, oh, God, there goes my reverie, right? There goes my reverie that now I'm going to have to be interrupted by talking to people. And it's just, there's nothing wrong with these people. They're perfectly fine, right? They're neighbors. They're people that I know around the neighborhood. It's totally fine, you know? But I'm just not in the mood. And it, it, it kills the momentum of my relaxation. <laughs> I know that sounds harsh and it might sound mean and whatnot, but it's just the way that I function. And I'm not the only one. There are many people out there who have this kind of lifestyle, this kind of personality, and the desert attracts us because the, the desert has a, a large famed history of attracting her, hermits, right? Quote unquote hermits. They would call them desert hermits. It's a thing. And I didn't learn about that until I was out here for a while and I'm like oh my god the desert does call to people it brings the sort of people that it wants it calls us in subconsciously and it keeps us here it changes us it does things to us right what kind of a conversation did we have today I hope this wasn't a weird depressing conversation to have I don't think it was depressing it's just this is my mind and this is where I am right I don't suffer from any kind of depression, but I, well, I mean, okay, let me, to be clear, I think all humans have some degree of, you know, depression, but for the most part, like I'm not clinically depressed. I'm not, no, nothing like that. Not at all. But I just, I'm, I'm more comfortable and secure hanging out with myself and I feel like being around people actually does make me feel a bit depressed is a bit harsh but we'll, we'll say we'll use the word deflated we'll put it that way which is interesting because I love to go out when I'm in the mood to go out I love to go out you cannot get me off the dance floor right? You just can't. <laughs> you can't. You guys have to get one of those hooks. You know those hooks in old-fashioned cartoons? Like, get off the stage, you suck. One of those. But if I'm not in the mood for it, I'm just not in the mood. All right, let's change the mood of this conversation today. It's just, you know what it is? It's a quiet morning. I'm enjoying my tea and I'm enjoying my coloring. And this this coloring page is taking me back to the day that I created that illustration and like how high I was after having moved to the desert and how magical it was. It's just oh, the desert. I love it out here. And this is my favorite time of year out here. So it makes me especially wistful. My walks become longer. I can take tea with me. Nice hot tea. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. And even when it's cold outside, I could still go to the tiki bar at night and pretend I'm in the tropics because that's another thing. I am a creature of extremes, right? I love the dry, barren desert. And yet on the flip, I love hot, steamy, tropical weather like I love the tropics are you kidding me Ugh. my ideal situation would be to exist on a planet or on an island we'll say that had a desert and the tropics so give me a tropical rainforest and a desert Ooh, I will take it absolutely Let me know in the comments, what's your ideal environment? 
Are you a forest person? Are you a desert person? A tropical person? And what kind of forest, if you are a forest person? Because there are different types of forests, right? Like deep, scary, European, black forest, fairy tale, spooky. Or New England, east coast of America, cutesy boopsy fall vibes forest. You know what I mean? They're different types. Let me know. I'm interested. I'm curious to know what my weirdos out there, where your brains are in regards to living situations. I have a friend who I've known for many years who used to be in love with living near the ocean. He recently moved to the woods and he couldn't be happier. I'm like, yep. Changing your environment does incredible things for your your happiness, for your soul, for your, I hate this term, but for your mental health. Uh. Why, why do I make that noise when I say that word? It's because I think uh, the health of your soul is more important than your mental health. I think soul health is going to do much better for you as a human being than your mental health. Oh, I need to take a day off because I'm stressing out. I need a mental health break. What you need is a soul reevaluation and you need to figure out what makes you tick and what ha what makes you happy deep inside and not worry so much about your brain. Make your soul happy and comfortable first and the brain will eventually follow suit. Not to dismiss your problems if you're stuck in that way, but I think that's one area where humans really need to evolve, is the need to realize that if you have a lot of mental health problems, yeah, it's an issue, but there's a deeper issue than that. Taking a day off to take a bath and sip some tea and not think about work is not going to solve your problems ultimately. It's a temporary respite. You need to, you need to dig deeper and figure out what, what the root cause of the problem truly is. Because, baby, it's not just needing a day off from work to focus on you. It's not that. It's deeper than that. Food for thought. Just saying. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. Baby, take your bath. <laughs> Buy your bath bombs. Do all of the things. Light your candles. Do all of the things. But understand that that's not going to solve all of your problems. It's, it's a deeper issue. Oh, my God. Didn't I say it was going to lighten the conversation? Girl. I'm gonna do <laughs> I'm going to finish the rest of this hair and I'm hopefully going to lighten up a little bit because once I start hearing more people start bopping around outside my door I will start to to <laughs> my my defense mechanisms will start to go up and I will be a little bit less wistful a little less dreamy and I will be more my my afternoon late morning early afternoon self right and the difference is, is like I said in the morning when it's quiet and magical, this is when all of my quiet, magical thoughts start to stir around. You know, I'm very wistful. I'm very dreamy. I'm very, oh, let me sip my tea and enjoy the birds. And then once everyone around me starts to wake up, it's like that switch just turns on. I'm like, all right, time to turn it on. Turn off the dreaminess and let's get through the day. I'm telling you, it's that defense mechanism. And then the same thing. When the world starts to shut down, Everybody starts to go to sleep. I start to wake up again, and I start to feel less tense, less puckered, shall we say, because like I tell you, just being around humans, it's, it's a struggle every day. All right, Earl. And you know what it could be, too, is that I haven't had coffee in three days, so maybe it's a gentler caffeine pie that I'm on right now, even though I'm telling you, I don't think caffeine affects me. I mean, I know that it does. It has to physiologically, but it does not affect me the way that it affects most people. Like it doesn't automatically wake me up. It doesn't make me more alert. I think it just kind of, if anything, you know what? And this actually makes sense. I think caffeine activates my my fight or flight a little bit more, if anything, right? So it makes me just a little bit more. <laughs> All right, I will check back with you a bit later. Okay, the hair is done, at least the base layer. It is wild to me how much these markers change when they dry. It's crazy. Whew. 
Oh, excuse me, where are the yawny yawns coming from? I really need to get started with my day, honestly. So what I'm going to do, it's getting a little bit late in the morning. So I'm going to finish her skin. Uh, maybe we'll do some of the background. I don't know. I thought I was going to do the background tan. But now since I'm thinking, well, I kind of want to make this a departure from the original illustration, which now that I'm thinking about it, she had purplish hair. So it's... <laughs> She's looking too similar to the original illustration, so we're going to make the background either some sort of green, aqua green, something. And so it won't be so much of a desert type theme, it will be different. Uh, but her skin, I definitely want to use this color. <laughs> it's uh, it's called Lemon Chiffon, and it's I, that's pretty accurate. It's a lemony yellow with a green tinge to it, which I dig a lot. I'm always griping about how I've yet to find a good lime green, a good citron even. It's just impossible. But this is close. and th This isn't close to what I'm looking for, but it's it's a nice shade of yellow green. Well, it's definitely more yellow. It's a, it's a greenish yellow, but it's certainly a yellow. But look how bright and annoying it is. It's not neon, but it is a bright color. I want to be careful with the eyes though because I want to, I know she's gonna get some kind of funky makeup. I probably should have funkified her makeup before I laid down the yellow. A cool color blocking type of a makeup, but oh well. It's too late for that and that's totally fine. But here she is with her greeny yellow skin. I love it. And the rest of her, let's see, where's her flesh exposed? Here. Bentley's in a mood. I'm telling you, it's late in the morning. The delivery people are starting to make their rounds, and the trucks are starting to drive up and down the street, and he's, he's hearing it. He's like, FedEx, UPS. Did I ever tell you all why he became so anti-delivery man? I think I may have. I may have touched on it a long time ago. But for those of you who don't know, for those of you who are newer, for those of you who have forgotten, for those of you who never heard the story, well, prior to my moving to Palm Springs, I lived in a location when he was small. Well, I mean, he is small, but when he was a puppy, he, we had a wall like a retaining wall and a fence. So when they would deliver packages, I would tell the delivery people, hey, it's a, just chuck them over the fence. Just chuck them over the wall. It's okay if they fall. They're going to fall on like a patch of dirt. It, it'll be fine. Nothing's going to break. It'll be fine. Just chuck them over. Don't even knock. Don't call. Just chuck them over. Or don't send a text message. Rather, they don't call. But you know what I mean. So <clears throat> they would indeed just chuck the packages over. They wouldn't throw them, but they would kind of like place them on top of the fence and nudge them so that they would fall down. Well, this dingus would hear them outside with the package and he'd be outside sniffing around the fence, curious, and then they would drop the package and nine times out of 10, it would fall on him or fall near him and he'd be scared out of his mind. So he became traumatized, <laughs> traumatized of delivery trucks. You would think, put two and two together, when you hear the truck, they're probably gonna drop something, so get away from the fence, right? But no, instead he took it personal, and now he hates them all. So, <laughs> that's the story on that, this little weirdo. Okay, there's her skin. I'm just gonna give her gloves. I think she'll be wearing gloves, because I do want to play with the black glaze on this one. I think it'll be a really nice contrast. So, I'm gonna lay down some green. I'll show you this awesome green that I'm gonna play with. It's so pretty. It's called, <laughs> it's such a beautiful green. Was it called yellowish green? <laughs> okay, see I wouldn't say that this is a yellowish green. I would call this, what? what what's the mint that is this color? Is it that fake mint? Winter green. Oh look, it's kind of like this. Kind of sort of. Kind of sort of. Kind of sort of. This is a little bit more blue green than that. Oh, I need some more of this. Mm. 
cold weather means more chapstick all day every day ugh I love that calm though hey relax but anyways isn't this pretty so she's basically in a field of uh, crystals, I suppose. Well, a crystal field, maybe. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's sci-fi. You can make it whatever the hell you want. But as for the the uh, sun or the moon back here, I don't know what it is. What color should we make it? Pink, orange, bright yellow. Ooh, what should we make it? I'm leaning towards pink. I think we'll wait a little bit. We could even get away with making it a bluish color, but I... No, 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 no. Let's not do that. Hmm. What will we do? I don't know. We'll have to think about that. All right. This one's starting to dry up a little bit. We're going to have to reduce this marker. Grab my alcohol spray in just a second. But I think that's cute nice little pastel alien moment we may put in some jelly roll moonlights which are the neon jelly rolls when I use pastels I typically put some neon on top of them just to give them a little bit more of a little bit more mm, not so much texture but just a little bit more of a contrast I suppose is the word that I'm looking for I like this though. This is gonna be cute. We're gonna pull this color into her makeup as well. I think that would be fun. Little crystal alien empress thingy, whatever the hell she is. The line, the lines in this book, the line work is so different. Than what I do now it's wild the thing is, is that my style has not changed necessarily in terms of the way that I draw but the line work my I came into the whole coloring book thing wanting to create something different I said I want my coloring books to be more sketchy in style because I thought the sketchier the line work is the scratchier scratchier the more it will encourage people to treat the books more as experimental playgrounds and what I found is that it actually confused people because the line work being so thin now this is one of the books in which I started to really make the decision that I needed to change it up a little bit because even though I like to give people what I want and I usually do sometimes I have to take in um, what the masses are doing and then I have to change course accordingly. I'll give you an example of what I mean. So let's grab here. Well, you know what? She's within reach. I'll grab Ms. Rococo Agogo and actually I will grab Deco Dolls. Okay. So if you take a look at the line art in Stardust Spaceless, let me find a page that I have not colored in. You see how there are varying line weights. There are thinner lines and they're all very sketchy. There are thicker lines in some areas, a lot of skipped lines as well. It's by all intents and purposes supposed to look like an ink sketch. It was confusing people. People didn't know how to handle these books. So now I have consciously made the effort to the line weights are still a little bit varied, but there's a little bit more uniformity in the overall line art. Here's one that I've not colored, so you can see here, another example. So varying line weights, yes, but not nearly as sketchy, I would say not sketchy at all really, as this. So more solid line art, basically. You see the difference? And I actually personally do prefer this, just from a graphic designer's perspective, just the way that I've evolved as an artist, I prefer my coloring books to look that way. And I continue to sketch this way in my sketchbooks. You see how I treat my sketchbooks in my sketchy Saturdays. Everything's wonky. Take a look at this. 
my recent crop of 80s ladies. See, basically, I was translating my sketching style into a coloring book. And I enjoy it so much that I've actually created coloring books based on this style. The Macarons sketchbook, the Spooklets sketchbook, which, do I have that one within reach? I should, yep, right here. So now I have made the conscious decision to keep the sketchier style in sketchbook style books and outside of my standard coloring books. I hope all that made sense, but that is just how I've evolved as a coloring book creator. And let's see, what was I going to do? Actually, I said I was going to shut my mouth once I put a little bit of color down in the background, right? Okay, I am going to get on with my day a little bit, get some work done, clean up a little bit my apartment. Ugh. So we're going to clean and then I will get back to you guys a little bit later. Hello, hello. We are back. We are in full villainess mode today. She's got the fur lined duster. It's a long sweater. It's so comfy cozy. I need it today because as you can tell, well if you cannot tell, I am just several notches lower today because I am in the middle of a head cold. It's definitely a cold. I've taken multiple tests. It's just a cold, but it's not the C word. We don't like that bitch around here. You guys know, but yes, your hypochondriac friend <laughs> has finally come down with something. Although a few weeks ago I had started coming down with something. Remember I had a little throat thing for a couple of days. Well, this time I did actually uh, catch a head bug. And the thing is, is it was really, really, really bad for about eight hours. And then after that, it was a gradual improvement. I think I caught something which resulted in an infection in my throat, specifically um, like my tonsil, my inner ear, something like that. I think it was my tonsil that was infected because on my right side. And I've always had an, like a sensitive right side of my body for some reason when I get sore throats and such. It's always the right side is where it starts and then it spreads. Well, this was not a typical sore throat. What this was is, uh, this is TMI, <laughs> but I went to sleep perfectly fine. In fact, I had been dancing, literally dance cleaning my apartment. I had been running up and down the hallway, dancing, cleaning, singing, annoying my dog, doing all that. Just cleaning my apartment. And then the next day, I woke up, or rather, at around 4 in the morning, because I did go to sleep at around midnight that night. Shocker. You know something's wrong when your girl goes to sleep at midnight, right? Because you know my sleep schedule is messed up. But I went to sleep, and I was abruptly woken up at around, it was just before 5 in the morning, to the most excruciating pain in my throat. And to what I thought was a bloody nose, I felt like my my sinus was on fire and it was leaking and it was dark so I couldn't see. But the pain in my throat was so bad, it I'd never felt anything like this in my life. It felt as though somebody was simultaneously lighting my tonsil on fire while trying to rip it out. Like they had dug their claws in it and we're either prodding it with a match or like trying to light it on fire. It, you know what? It felt like somebody was actually grabbing it, pulling it, and poking it. The worst freaking pain. I couldn't even breathe. I went up to go see what was happening with my nose because I swear I thought I had a bloody nose. I thought something happened up in my sinuses and I was bleeding. No, it was just sinus, the clear stuff, you know, TMI. But anyway, my ear started to hurt, my inner ear. So I thought, oh my God, it's some kind of infection, like la, 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 la. The second I woke up to go see what was wrong, instant nausea, instant nausea. I nearly passed out. I nearly passed out. The pain was so bad. You know when you get that pain so bad that it doesn't hit you? Like you feel it, but as soon as you stand up and you take a few steps, you start to see stars. And you're like, oh my God, I'm going to pass out. <clears throat> that happened to me. It was excruciating pain. But the bizarre thing is that I got up 
dealt, washed my face, grabbed some water, laid back down. I couldn't sleep. I was tossing and turning. But within a few hours, the pain was a little bit more tolerable. Bizarre. So yeah, it was absolute misery for a few hours. But now it's tolerable. Now it's just a, a head cold. I don't feel great, but I feel okay. Have an appetite, no fever. She's good. She's good. It is sound terrible. And minor head cold. So or minor headache. So your girl's fine. She's fine. She's fine. I promise. Nobody worry. I know I went on a big ol' explanation about what's going on because I know that if I if I toss out some symptoms, people are going to try to diagnose me over the internet. You know, and I'm just trying to let you all know the trauma happened, but I'm okay now. Um, I'm just not going to speak for 10 hours today. My tea's actually on the stove, if you can hear my, my teapot over there. Guggling. Guggling? Gurgling? That's what I need to say. Because uh, I need some tea. My throat is uh, not feeling so hot. No more pain, but it's just, ugh. Not only am I not going to talk, not because I can't, but I do not want to <laughs> subject you all to the constant nose blowing, because, ew, right? I'm doing my best not to sniffle, you know, the inhale, the I'll do it once, that, because number one, it disgusts me when I do it, it disgusts me when other people do it. And it's just ew. So I'm refraining from that, but okay. Oops, future and slightly more ill, definitely more congested. <laughs> Me here. Don't worry, it's not getting worse. It's just one of those things where I'm editing at night, and you know, sicknesses always feel worse at night. So I'm not technically getting worse, it just feels worse. Anyway, I failed at <laughs> trying to stop the snifflies. They get worse when I speak, so I'm sorry I tried. Anyways, on with it. You guys are learning another little tidbit about <laughs> Ms. Ms. Hermity Desert Vampire, the elusive desert vampire, right? The giant secret who lives in a hermit cave in the middle of Palm Springs. Because I'm sick, you get to learn something about me. You guys know that I'm a hypochondriac, so of course... Being infested with germs right now is not doing good things to my brain. However, I'm thankful that I didn't get it as badly as other people probably would because of my obsession with vitamin C and with um, immunity supplements. I'm constantly taking those like effervescent tablets, vitamin C and the zinc and the herbs and all of that. So I think that's what helped me bounce back so quickly. My tea is done. Let's continue this. We'll discuss the pet peeve in a second. It smells so good. I'm drinking a vanilla chai today. And again, for those of you on the internet who are like, wait a minute, you just told us you were sick and you're over here drinking black tea. Blah, 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 blah. You're supposed to be drinking herbal tea when you're sick. Listen, internet doctors have told you already that I feel okay. It's just now an irritated throat, and a little bit of a head cold. We're okay. No fever, nothing crazy. It's just all in the throat, okay? We're all in like the sinuses. We're okay. All in sinuses. She's okay. All right. So the pet peeve, I sound miserable. Okay, check this out. I found these at the store yesterday, and they taste like poison, like icy poison, severe throat drops. It's like 12% menthol, or no, oh my god, 20%, 20 milligrams. They're so strong. They're disgusting, and they taste even worse when you're drinking tea, but you guys know that I love the flavor of aromatics and botanicals, so having one of these and then drinking tea tastes like you are drinking actual literal poison venom and i love it we've got the villain thing going on the girl's got to test her poison right 
So anyway, the pet peeve of mine is, uh, is this even going to be a color in chat? It started as a color in chat, <clears throat> and now it's turned into um, meet the villain. She's a little sick. <laughs> so um, we had a nice conversation at the beginning, right? It was all about the desert and how much I love it. Now it's like, and this is how I kill people. Uh, so anyway, the pet peeve of mine is when people sniffle. I'm going to do it again. Ooh, you heard that, right? Ooh. I just gagged myself. Oh, I just gagged myself. Oh my God. Because it's the post-nasal drip. As you can tell, not only am I a hypochondriac, but when something disgusts me, I have a very visceral reaction to Oh my god. Okay, my eyes are watering. Sorry. Um, oh my gosh. So, when people sniffle, I can't stand it. I am a perpetual nose blower, so as soon as I feel something in my nose, I reach for a tissue. I'm one of those people who goes through a million tissues when they are ill, which is very rare, but... It happened this time um, because I don't I don't want to sniff that I don't want to re-inhale that back into my body and then swallow it because that's where it goes when people sniffle it goes right down the back of your throat that is so freaking disgusting oh my gosh oh my gosh no no it's akin to people um, like flossing at the table or like picking their note you know what I mean that it's very much that and I can't stand it I can't stand it like sick little kids when all they do is wipe their hands on their face and then sniff all mm -mm. Mm -mm. no no People tell me, oh, Carla, or they used to anyway. I think they finally got the point that I'm serious when I say that I have absolutely no desire to have children. Um, they didn't believe me as a teenager. And it took me getting into my 20s for people to finally start believing it, right? And it's like, okay, like, I'm not ever going to have a child and it's not going to change. Like, at first, when I entered my 20s, people were like, hmm she's still young she changed her mind and then as my 20s progress people are like you know what maybe she's not kidding so yeah i think people have finally realized that i'm not interested because children disgust me now do i hate children um no not at all they simply are not my cup of tea uh kids love me though of course because i'm a walking cartoon character but no i don't mind kids um, but <laughs> I, I think the, the running joke is <clears throat> if I were to ever have children, it would have to be under very specific circumstances and those circumstances would be, <laughs> it would have to be a, <clears throat> they would have to be paid for. So if a sugar daddy insists on my having children, it's going to be, you know what? you are going to have them paid for and what i mean by that is we can go to the clinic and we can get everything taken out you can get all the all the eggs and all of the egg making or baby making things you need from me get them from you mix them in a petri dish and shove them in somebody else a surrogate because i refuse to carry a child i absolutely refuse to carry a child and i want a nanny so you better have somebody taking care of the kid uh when i'm not in the mood and I'm going to teach my children to not be little social media internet fiends. And I'm going to raise little prim and proper Victorian children who don't even enjoy getting their clothing dirty. Right? So, would I make a good mother? Uh, maybe. But I would definitely raise little uptight, fashion-loving snob children 100 percent. would they be nice snobs yeah they'd be nice 
They're not going to be. There's a difference between being a snob and being a stuck-up asshole, right? I have no patience for that. When I say snob, I mean, imagine my children, okay? Imagine my little, like, <laughs> my little Wednesday Adams, but she would be fashionable, okay? Or I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if I was stuck with, like, a little, a little spooky gay kid, right? Imagine my child on the playground wearing his, because like I said, if I have children, it's going to be with a rich man, right? <clears throat> rich woman, whatever, whoever's going to pay for it, <laughs> because I'm not putting over the expense. I'm not, I'm not, uh-uh. So imagine it's a day where I take the kids to the park we're gonna go get ice cream we're gonna go buy some fancy new shoes here let me a day in the life of carla as a mother okay wake up <clears throat> eat breakfast get dressed today we're gonna go shoe shopping shoe shopping and we'll buy a sweater today's a sweater and a shoe shopping day so here i am with my little and in this situation well, it'll be either a boy or girl child. It doesn't matter. We go to the boutiques, to the fancy little local boutiques. We buy a couple of accessories, and then we go to the fancy stores. Let's let's go to let's go to Gucci. Let's go to Balenciaga. Okay. Now I love to thrift shop, so I like thrift shopping for me. But for kids, I think the designer clothes is so precious. Like, I, I find everything at the thrift store. This came from a thrift store, actually. It's a 90s duster. So for me, I'm all about the vintage and the thrift. But for kids, I think designer is so cute. And so anyway, we'll go buy, we'll go buy the child some Gucci shoes and a Balenci Balenciaga little coat. Then we go to the park. And we go to the park not to play on the dirty ass playground equipment, not to roll around in the dirt. Although I think I would let my kids swing on swings after I disinfected the, the little seat, of course. So we go play on the swing for a little bit and then there's no playground. You are not going to play with all of these other filthy kids who are coughing, eating dirt and doing all that. You can watch, but you're not gonna play. My child would be raised so well that they wouldn't even want to engage in that buffoonery. So we would walk around, bird watch, feed the birds, feed the squirrels. There's signs everywhere that says don't do that, but screw you. We want to feed the animals. We will go to the little ice cream truck, little ice cream stand. We'll get an ice cream, and a kid is going to come up to my child and say, I like your outfit. You want to go play? And my kid is going to say, thank you. And my child will compliment something about that child that, and we'll just say he, my little gay spooky child will compliment this child who approached him and say, thank you. I really like your hair. And the other little kid's going to say, thanks. You want to go play? And my child is going to say, no, I don't want to get my Balenciaga dirty. That's my child. Polite, but a snob. Carla, that's no way to raise a child. Listen, if you raise a child in conventional ways, you get conventional people, right? Am I conventional? No. So there you go. It will never happen. Can you imagine the degree to which the stars would need to align for that situation to actually come into my life? And, you know, it would require the sugar daddy. It would require... <laughs> The, well, everything. It would start there. It would be sugar daddy willing to pay for uh, a surrogate, a nanny. So, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. I swear I've spent more time talking than I have actually working on this. But I hope you guys had a nice little glimpse into <laughs> what my future would be like as a mother because I, I don't get asked often because you guys are very respectful, but 
people find it odd and in fact they don't even believe me when I tell them that I have no desire and I never have to have children or to engage in traditional relationships. Now, people say, oh, are you against being in a relationship? No, it's just something that it's never been a priority for me because I'm so, this is going to sound awful, but I'm so self-absorbed. And what I mean by that, I'm trying to remove the stigma of saying that, but I put myself first in all that I do. So I don't, I just don't see the need to have anyone else around to um, complete me, so to speak, uh, because that's typically why people are in relationships, right? They need somebody else to make them feel whole and to make them feel wanted. And it's like, I don't need any of that. I'm all that for me. So I don't, I don't need that. Um, if someone ever comes around that will enhance my life, cool. I will absolutely um, entertain that idea. Why not? But uh, yeah, no, it's just not something that, uh, like I said, that I need necessarily, you know, it's just not something that I pursue. And typically when I say things like that, uh, people will then follow up with, well, do you ever want to get married and have children? And I'm like, well, what an antiquated way of thinking. Like, no, like not everybody, that's not for everyone. And it's just, uh, I don't know, it just surprises me that these days, <laughs> these days, she says like an old lady, people are still hung up on traditional living, traditional relationships and all of that. It's like, come on, when is the world going to evolve and understand that there is, there are more options in life than doing things the traditional way. I was, I'm telling you, I was born either too early or too late. I don't know. So hopefully, unless someone comes by with a stake to the heart, in the near future, I will get the opportunity to see how the world evolves. Okay, so I'm going to play with the white highlighting pen a bit more. I'm going to add some more detail to the page and then we are going to call it done. I feel as though I'm already overdoing the talking. I talked way longer than I had anticipated to because we had a little, a little journey <laughs> into the motherhood hypothetical. So um, yeah, I need to give my throat a rest. And I will check in with you when the page is all done. All right, my heathens. Our little alien, princess, warrior, queen, whatever this is, is all complete. The tea did actual wonders for my throat. Do I sound a little bit better? I mean, it's temporary because of course the tea helped. Excuse the barking dogs. They are both barking at me. I'm dog sitting today, so I've got two Mine and our friend the Muppet Hmm, are you gonna bark at me now because I'm staring at you? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Oh my goodness What have I done? Would you guys like a snack? Here, I've got Excuse me guys, I have to give them some salmon jerky. Bentley, would you like to say hello to everyone? Or you guys just want your snacks, huh? Salmon jerky for both. They're both allowed to have salmon jerky. So here's a jerky look. Jerky, jerky, jerky. Here's one for you. Mm. And Bentley, where are you? Here you go. All right. Okay, so. Excuse the puppy treat break, but beasts, what are you going to do? You know I love them. People, not so much. Animals, all day. Okay, so she is all complete. Um, I am definitely going to not film any more videos today because I'm, I'm, 
I'm happy that my throat feels slightly, slightly better, but I know it's temporary, so let's not completely destroy it. This will be all I'm doing today in terms of the blah, 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 believe it or not. But she's all done, and I think she turned out cute. Is it one of my favorite pages? No, but do I like it? Yeah, I think it's a cute one. Uh, nothing spectacular, but definitely fun. And I, in part, attribute that to this book because I think the subject matter just automatically lends itself to allowing one to play with wonky color palettes, right? An orange sky? Why? I don't know. Green crystal background? Why? I don't know. Neon yellow skin? Why? I don't know, because we're in outer space. We can do whatever the hell we want. So thank you for joining me for this color and chat and for the sniffly... <laughs> last part of it. I'm sorry. I know. Sniffles. Ew. 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 I did my best to suppress the sniffles, but you know when you talk, it's kind of impossible and ugh. I know. I have my my box of tissue at the ready though because mm, we can't we can't sniffle anymore today. So thank you for joining me. Take a look down below. Everything you need to know will be down below. Links to my website, links to where you can purchase my book. And that's going to do it for today. Be bad, be good. I don't give a damn which. Just come back in one piece. And I will see you in the next one. You guys, you know what I just realized? It's been two minutes since I finished filming. And I was about to clean up the desk and put everything away. We did not use a lick of glitter today. Not even a little. No glitter today no glitter and it hadn't even occurred to me at all throughout the process of this video uh i just automatically assume that i'm going to be using glitter and no glitter have we done this in the recent past with no glitter i don't think so hmm interesting anyway yeah no glitter today we didn't need it the lesson the takeaway from that is I suppose if there's a lesson to be learned, uh, because I'm clearly even I'm not even a staunch follower of my own technique, right? Because typically I'm so accustomed to adding glitter, and it just didn't even occur to me. Uh, don't get stuck in your ways. <laughs> don't always utilize the same mix of techniques and the same supplies. Omit one. Omit two. Introduce something new. I don't know. Anyway, I guess that's today's takeaway. So, um... Let's get on with the end of the video. Thank you again for watching.